dropping, looting, running, shooting, and then dying, followed by doing it all over again. The multiplayer battle arena microgenre has seen an explosive rise to prominence over the last two years, and that's been largely due to one man, Player Unknown, or Brendan Green, as he is known in Meat Space. Green is the mind behind the Battle Royale mods for DayZ, Armor 3, he consulted on H1Z1 Battle Royale, and has now made his own game with Blue Hole in the form of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, often abbreviated to PUBG? Really? Ugh. The game has been met with wide critical and commercial success while still being in early access. But this raises an interesting question. How did a relatively unknown developer manage to nail down the one more go compulsiveness we normally associate with roguelikes and fast paced action games like Geometry Wars and Devil Daggers? It all comes down to predictable randomization. But in order to understand how that works, we're going to need a quick crash course on Skinner Box psychology. Flashback to 1930, where BF Skinner is trying to condition rats to push a button. He does this by rewarding them with food every time they do, but once the rats are full, when their needs are sated, they stop. This prompted Skinner to develop two alterations in his further experiments. Firstly, to replace the reward mechanism. Primal needs such as food and sex are greater conditioning rats to press the button, but only until their need for these things are met. Non-biological reward mechanisms, such as pleasure-inducing electrodes used by Olds and Milner in the 1950s, have no such drop-off and caused the rats to push the button even at the expense of meeting their primary needs. The other was to semi-randomize the frequency of food payout, and this is key to PUBG. If there's one thing that brains love, it's winning. They've evolved to reward rats and humans alike with dopamine because it helps them survive long enough to breed. So if the rat knows it will be rewarded, it will keep doing the same job of pushing that button until it is. When the rat is rewarded, the dopamine payoff is larger because the rat put more effort in deepening the desire to get more of that reward. If the reward becomes predictable, then the effort, and thusly the payoff, drops. Did you ever wonder why Hearthstone lets you invest a lot of effort into grinding gold to get a randomized card pack, occasionally deigning to reward you with a WAAA GOLD AND LEGENDARY before subtly pointing you in the direction of the OK, now spend real money button. Yeah. But back to PUBG. PUBG's main reward mechanism is, of course, the fun of playing, so how is it dished out in Skinner Box fashion? It all comes down to predictable randomization. Every PUBG game starts off the same way. Faff around in the lobby for a bit, then you're on the drop plane. The drop plane flies in a straight line across the island, and you can jump out whenever you like, floating down on a parachute. The plane's trajectory is randomized, but the distance you can travel isn't which creates a predictable starting swathe that concentrates players in certain sections of the map, making sure that you're never too far away from an opponent. This theme continues once you land. Weapon and vehicle spawns are mostly completely random, with a couple of exceptions. The spawn points themselves are on average denser in certain areas, meaning more chances for the rarest gear to drop, which in turn means more players will be there looking for it. The same rule applies for Pupka's random crate spawns. They appear frequently enough to be a core part of the gameplay, but rare enough to always contain useful loot, drawing in players from across the map to fight over it. That is, of course, unless it contains the Tommy Gun. Then, you've got the ever-closing safe zone that slowly shrinks around another randomly determined point on the map, though at a predictable pace. If you're outside of it, you take gradual damage that increases as the game goes on, so probably best to stay on the inside. The safe zones are perhaps a little bit too generous, giving players time to drive over to an area well away from the drop zone and get a bunch of uncontested gear before driving back to the safe zone. These three factors combined drastically limit the effective space players can usually traverse in a single game, and bring matches to a roughly 20-25 to 25 minute climax, the estimated average human attention span. Hmm. So why do any of this at all? The answer lies, once again, with Skinner's Rats. Truly random starts, such as in industry competitor H1Z1 Battle Royale, often leave players isolated, prolonging stretches of downtime that eventually lead to boredom, which means less incentive to play the game again. In PUBG, however, not only do the randomized starts keep things fresh by offering new strategies and chances to improve, they also guarantee that you'll be in reasonable proximity to other players. Close proximity to other players means two things. Firstly, 
more chances for fun, shooty action, and secondly, more tension, as gunshots ring off in the distance and you notice the telltale signs of other players skulking around. This is the reason why footsteps are so loud in PUBG, to create alien-esque moments of dread as you cower inside a house, shotgun in hand, your enemies lurking outside, spamming the Evangelion music through their microphones. This sense of tension keeps the tactical portion of your brain engaged and, perhaps more importantly, distracted from the fact that running around mostly identical houses, picking up ammunition, really isn't very engaging on its own. Even Player Unknown himself has said that the game is designed around long periods of tension. In a Eurogamer interview he explains, and by winning it's being smart and not taking on fights until you know you can win them. That's the key here. Go get good loot, and then find a bush, and then love that bush, and just wait for people to make mistakes. Player Unknown's fight of Philia aside, he makes an interesting point. By building the game around the tension and tactics between fights, not the fights themselves, you increase the novelty and thrill of combat because it's sporadic, but inevitable. Random, but predictable. Random weapon spawns also serve to keep the game novel, but still predictable. Bluehole's aim is to make each gun roughly equal in power level, so that the novelty of each one lasts for as long as possible, keeping the core drop, loot, shoot, gameplay loop interesting for as long as possible. But enough about gameplay, it's time to talk about the fruits of your labour, victory. There's a second reward mechanism in play in PUBG, after all. The elusive winner winner chicken dinner. In the event you're the last person standing, you'll be rewarded with a boatload of in-game currency and a nice little victory screen. Because victory in PUBG is so hard to attain, the eventual payoff cements the effort-reward relationship in your mind, and whilst you may quit that session on a high, you'll soon want to feel that victory rush again. PUBG nicely reminds you of this fact whenever you die, showing your position in that game's leaderboard and subtly encouraging you to have another go and do better next time. Like Player Unknown himself is whispering in your ear, egging you on. So, what we've learned is that a little bit of randomization is key to creating a game that scratches that one more go itch. In Crypt of the Necrodancer, each level has a randomized layout, but the kinds of enemies that appear and the music that plays isn't, allowing the player's subconscious to keep satisfying the same effort-reward relationship while their conscious mind doesn't get bored by doing exactly the same thing every time. The groovy music, of course, doesn't hurt either. Any game designed to be played multiple times will usually try and shake things up in one way or another, regardless of how satisfying the core loop is. Whether it's Minecraft's randomly generated worlds, though with a predictable trajectory of wood to diamond, or the wide variety of maps in RTSs like StarCraft 2 that get randomly selected every time, yet have several universal themes. Skinnerbox psychology is key to each of these games, and in fact to many different genres, in terms of psychological phenomena, it may very well be one of the most ubiquitous lessons in game design. It is, however, tempting to think of game developers like Player Unknown, who are aware of Skinner and his rats as malicious, getting you hopelessly addicted to his game in order to milk you of the sweet attention nectar that definitely grants him eternal youth. But in reality, it's a small subset of developers who use these techniques at the expense of their audience, mostly in the free-to-play or gambling space. Not that these two are all that different, of course. Both use predictable randomization extensively to prop up boring gameplay. These games use that compulsion to play more as a means of manipulating players into buying microtransactions and other expensive tat. In most games, however, contrary to what some internet personalities will tell you, the Skinner Box relationship is a mutually beneficial one. The player's brain rewards them for doing something they already know to enjoy, playing and winning the game and the developer gains a deep and profound sense of artistic satisfaction, having contributed to the glow they make more money. That's why they do it. You play the game more and they make more money. It's, it's pretty simple. That said, next time you go to play a game of PUBG, remember Skinner's rats and how simple they were, falling for such an easy, primitive even, psychological trick. Evolved hominids such as yourself are far beyond rats. Then just go ahead and push that little button. You know you want to. Squeak, squeak.